Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Hi, everyone. Welcome to our first show of MotoShop. Uh, this is going to be an exploration of, uh, of Luxology's Moto, th- how to get stuff in, how to get stuff out, and how to work with stuff while you're there. Uh, I'm here with our in-house Moto expert, McKay Hawks. Hey, McKay. Hey, good to be here. Good to have you here. Thanks. And uh, and 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 what we're looking at here is um, this is a Sound Devices 552. And uh, where did we get this? We got this from a CAD file, from the actual CAD file from the manufacturer. Right. And one of the reasons we wanted to work this in Moto is because Moto has some really excellent tools for rendering out CADs beautifully with right. great photorealism. So we wanted to bring it in. And right. And so now, so we brought the stuff in. So it started off in, in a CAD program. And of course, when it comes in, uh, this was the first import, right? Uh, correct. This is a, what I've opened here. Um, yeah, what I wanted to do is basically show a, a lot of times when you're bringing in CADs, it's a different format. You run into right. a lot of different problems than you would yeah. with other things. Yeah. So I wanted to run through some of the common problems you run into, how right. you work around them, and, well, and, and, and basically how to get a beautiful render out of out of a CAD file. Yeah, and because and one of the things is is that with this with the uh, uh, with a CAD file, you know, we're not bringing it directly into Moto, right? So we're we're going through something else, and there's a couple things. Exactly. There's, there's right hemisphere. Polytrans, hemisphere. Uh, it, I guess 3D Studio Max has some features. Right. So there's a variety of different ways. Uh, but no matter what I do, whether I do it myself or if I'm getting a file that's coming from somebody else, mm-hmm. there's common problems. Right. Uh, so the the because what it's basically doing is it's taking a, a CAD file and it's got to tessellate the mesh, so you're right. going to get a triangulated mesh. Right. Um, and and uh, th- there's always going to be some discrepancies between what can come over and how things come over. So you're going to be dealing with a mesh that's totally different than a, a normal mesh, like a poly mesh or, right. or something like that, or, or a NURBS mesh or right. anything like that. So you have a totally different set of issues when you're dealing with a CAD conversion. Now, what did you deal with specifically uh, with this import? Um, well, when it first came over, I was dealing with, uh, I noticed that I didn't do the translation on this one directly. Mm-hmm. It was coming from somebody else. I noticed that, like, right in here, we see the, uh, let's see, let me make sure I have the right file open. Um, curve radius. Right. Uh, the, the curve radius was, you see, we're getting this, this faceted edge on here. Right, and, and, and one of the things about that is, is that, you know, you would, someone might be tempted to try to, to, to smooth it. Right. You know, to well, subdivide it. Try and subdivide it. And you can see what happens when I tab to subdivide a, a, a triangulated mesh. Yeah, it's just a big mess. It's just a big mess. <laughs> you can't really do it. Because it needs to be built that way. It, it needs to be built to be subdivided. It needs to be built to be subdivided. This is not built to be subdivided. One right. thing you could do is, is use this as a template and then go and re-mesh everything, but right. that's a very long, tedious process. And one of the big mesh. advantages, I mean, you, you, at that point, I mean, it, what's great is you'd have a template to work from uh, and, exactly. and, and to build from, but, but obviously one of the big advantages is we get all this detail that someone spent weeks or months putting yeah, together uh, that we don't have to. Exactly. I mean, you're, you're reinventing the wheel. If you want to take a product and go ahead and remodel everything, well, if you can work with the CAD directly, you are miles ahead of where you right. would normally be. So right. from a workflow standpoint, it's way, way better. Right. So what else were the, some of the issues? Um, there? So we, we brought it back in, and uh, um, I'll show you something else that I always I, uh, run into. Uh, you can see this one is fixed. It has a much a much tighter turn radius. So I basically right. sent it back. I said, hey, can you run this? Can you run it with a tighter turn radius? And right. depending on the software, uh, every software will have features that'll let you, you're basically going to uh, run, uh, run a tighter curve radius yep. so that you get a cleaner mesh. So I sent it back to the guy, he sent it back, and we got it. We got a good looking model from right. it. Uh, so this is much cleaner, we can zoom in much tighter. But another problem we run into, if you can see when I try to render this, you see this? Right. Th- this area, oh, I'm pointing on the screen. Uh, this dark area right in here. Right. Um, well, if you look here, it's like, well, gee, that looks fine. That's another common problem when dealing with uh, uh, files from a CAD. Or is, anything that's been tessellated, right? Yeah, any, exactly. From, from a CAD mm-hmm. uh, is, is you're going to deal with this. So what you'd be tempted to do is say, well, I know my mesh is here, uh, but why isn't it showing up here? So I'm just going to you know, select these polys, and if you hit F, you'll flip it. 
right. well, gee, that didn't, didn't work. Didn't work. Right. So there's a number of things you can do um, in the translation software themselves. You can right. go through multiple steps to try to get it to come out correctly and then kind of combine things together. I didn't have that option because I wasn't doing the conversion directly. Right. So a quick workaround for that was um, basically you can take the material here mm -hmm. and turn it double-sided. Right. Boom. It just, and, and so it just doesn't matter which way. It and goes. it doesn't matter. And and you'll see, so, you know, now when I zoom in here, we get a live preview. Mm -hmm. We can see we're getting a real nice detail out of this model. Right. Um, and everything's looking good. Once you get a once you get a good mesh to work from, then you can start texturing. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to show you one other thing. One of the advantages when I was working with, with CADs that I really liked in Moto is I, I was going to use it as a template. Right. because I'd never had much success with CAD files. Right. And then I, I, I got this CAD file and I translated it and I brought it all in and, and, and I was expecting to, to re, you know, remesh this thing and do mm -hmm. everything. And I just kind of applied some materials and I rendered it out. I'm like, this is really nice. <laughs> this looks gorgeous. I'm like, wait right. a minute. So I contact Lux Luxology and, I was, uh, and they were saying basically they, they implemented a new thing called vertex normals. Right. Um, so they're rendered based upon vertex normals. So when the CAD translation uh, takes place, it includes those vertex normals in the data. So it's not going off the poly, it's going off an average. Right. So everything comes out smooth. So we get this kind of detail in here. Right. Um, right through here, we Which can see great. everything is rendering beautiful and smooth. I wanted to show you really quick when you go into, um, I wanted to show you what happens when you lose your vertex normals because when you're dealing with a CAD, and and you you're trying different things to get the mesh to come in properly. Right. Once you lose those normals, it's a big mess. It's a big mess. You got to start over. Right. Um, so this is what happens. You can see right through here. Yeah. See, is, see how it's starting to tessellate and get all mm -hmm. ugly looking. Right. Well, that means you lost your vertex normals. So got it. so the goal is to make sure you get a clean mesh through your translation software that you keep your vertex normals. And as long as you do that, right. Once you bring it into Moto, um, it, uh, again. You know, you, if you're having problems with that thing, you hit the double-sided, and, right. and you're good to go. You can start right. texturing it like you would a normal model. So um, I just wanted to r quickly run through for this episode some of the things we run into. We might right. get more into detail in another time of right. exactly, you know. What to do next. What to do next. Mm -hmm. um, but I wanted to just show you yeah, show us, what this show looks us, like. Show us the love. Us it's, the love. Uh, it's, it's why you this is This is what's so cool about Moto is the photorealism that comes out of it is... Um, See, I think this is the one. Render. Let's get a preview really quickly here. This is the actual product right there. It's a, a you can see a, a real time. I can get some real time feedback here. Right. With Moto's preview render. Um, and and it's great. I mean, the thing is, is and it also helped. They sent us one of the uh, one of the devices. So they sent us the 552, and it, and it helps a lot to be sitting there next to it. And we'll talk about that in another show. Exactly. But sitting it, next to it and really like looking at it and trying to figure out whether it works because the CAD program gives you a lot that that shell exactly. to start with. Um, do you have a, do you have a render of that? We can yeah. Can take I was going to pull up the pull up the render here. This gives there you an is. idea of what this thing yeah. looks like. And 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 what you know, not having to go through and remodel yeah. everything. You know, Moto's good at great at modeling, but if right. you don't have to, then yeah. why? Re it's also great at rendering. Yeah. And so, what we were able to put our energy and time and focus into is, is like you said, we had the actual model right there with us. Right. And we go in and we can just you know start tearing this apart and and, and making surface textures so that we get an exact match right. of this product. Yeah. Um, from yeah. a workflow standpoint, it offers tremendous benefits when so you can get it. When you, I mean, you and it's something you always want to ask for if you're working on a product you know, can you get the CAD file? And, and a lot of times people who are going to give it to you, they don't know what to get output it at, and you kind of just want to get the CAD file if you can get it. Right. Um, and then, and then work on it, it if yeah, you can exactly. get it. Otherwise, you give them instructions on, on based on some of the stuff to uh, export it. Right, exactly. Fantastic. Cool. Okay, thank you very much. No problem. And thank you for watching our first episode of Motoshop.